So we're trying to find out the difference between an idea and a notion, according to both Hylas and Philonus. Uh, I know what you're thinking. It's like, why is this such a big deal? Tr trust me, right? This sets up, <laughs> this sets up Philonus's big point. All right, so uh, really find this, right, in this exchange between Hylas and Philonus, where um, Hylas is, is kind of laying it out, right? So uh, he says, I always say, I acknowledge, Philonus, that upon a fair observation of what passes in my mind, I can discover nothing else but that I am a thinking being. By the way, that's an illusion to Descartes, right? I'm a thinking being, affected with a variety of sensations. Neither is it possible to conclude how a sensation should exist in an unperceiving substance. In other words, the color blue isn't just floating around out there, right? You have to, it has to be in a mind. Right? Uh, but then on the other hand, when I look on sensible things in a different view, considering them as so many modes and qualities, I find it necessary to suppose a material substratum without which they cannot be conceived to exist. Philonus says, material substratum, call you it? Right now, he knows he's got Hylas. He knows he's got it. Pray, by which of your senses can you be acquainted with that being? These guys are empiricists. Both Hylas and Philonus are empiricists. And if you can't trace that knowledge back to experience, it don't exist. Not only do you not know it, that thing doesn't exist. <clears throat> so Hylas responds, it itself is not sensible. <laughs> to which Philonus go, really? <laughs> it's modes and qualities only being perceived by the senses. It's modes and qualities, not the thing. I presume that it was by reflection and reason you obtained the idea of it, Philonus replies. Hyla says, I do not pretend to have any proper positive idea of it. To which Philonus is saying, aha! However, I conclude it exists, because qualities cannot be conceived to exist without support. To which Philonus says, it seems then you have no, you have only a relative notion of it, or that you conceive it not otherwise than by conceiving the relation it bears to sensible qualities, to which Hyla says, right. Uh-oh. Um, this is the problem. So notice there's a difference between ideas and notions. <laughs> um, remember, uh, well, I think, think about this for a second. I mean, look at this paragraph, right? Look at this paragraph. So first of all, I, uh, um, Hylas is saying, I don't have an idea of it. <laughs> and it, it's like, wait, wait, you don't have an idea of it. That sounds suspicious. You know, Philonus says, oh, so you only have a notion. <clears throat> so there's already this contract between an idea and notion. An idea has already seen better. Right? Look at this language again from this passage. Look at this language again from this passage. Uh, I acknowledge, Philonus, that upon a fair observation of what passes in my mind, I can discover nothing. Look at that paragraph. Does any of this seem familiar? Right? Does any of this seem familiar? Um, look at some of the terms. We've heard some of these terms before, haven't we? We've got reflection, sensation, material substance, substratum, qualities. Which philosopher has given us, even ideas, which philosopher has given us these notions, these, <laughs> these terms before? Hylas is Locke. Hylas is Locke, right? Barclay's probably trying to be too, too polite than just like really call him out. But Hylas is Locke. Hylas's theory is Locke's theory. Hylas' theory is Locke's theory. Remember what Locke talked about this. Right? We have sensation and reflection, and there's qualities. Uh, qualities and ideas. Ideas are in your head, their experiences, qualities are in the object. There's a difference between the two. And material substance is what qualities inhere in. Okay, but you don't see qualities. You only see what they cause. You don't see material substance at all. And remember what Locke said, we have no general idea of material substance. I mean, that, that should have been, you know, way back, that should have been like, whoa, what are you talking about? We have no general idea of material substance. I thought you said that you can account for existence. <laughs> you know, through this, uh, through this uh, theory of knowledge, you can tell us what exists. Barclay is taking Locke to task with this dialogue, right? 
Barclay is saying, look, you promised to give me an account of knowledge that required that, that used only experience. You didn't require any innate ideas. Guess what the innate idea is in this dialogue? It's material substance. Because you don't experience innate ideas. By Locke's own theory, oh, sorry, um, you don't experience material substance, it's an innate idea. By Locke's own theory, material substance is not experienced. That makes it an innate idea. So this is really the point that Barclay's trying to make here. He, you know, Barclay is basically accusing Locke of being a rationalist, that this notion of material substance must be supposed in order to claim that there is material substance, but that's not something you experience. Now, maybe Barclay could have gone a different way. <laughs> maybe he could have said something like, well, of course there are material objects, uh, so I guess I have to give up being an empiricist and, and take on the rationalist idea of material substance, but Barclay's not doing that. Barclay says, right? Barclay says that, <clears throat> Uh, that he's holding on to empiricism with an iron fist grip here. He's not letting go of empiricism. But you do not see or experience material substance. You only see and experience what material substance causes. Now, we keep calling it material substance, but who knows what it is? Because you don't see it. You don't see it. Hmm? So, this, so you know, here's kind of the linchpin in, in uh, uh, Barclay's argument, Phil and his, his argument here. Uh, here's the absurdity of a material substance. You have to be a rationalist. And with rationalism, it's not a matter of whether you're on a crazy train, it's a matter of which one. Or we can look at skepticism. What exists out there are material objects, but I can't see them or experience them. So, gee, I guess I don't know about them. So like I said, Barclay is holding on to empiricism. He's going to hold on to empiricism more than he holds on to the idea of material substance. And that's why he reaches the conclusion he does. There's, there are objects, they exist, they're just not material. And the reason why he's giving up on material substance is because he can't experience it.